This next installment video is supposed to be themed along the lines of the film classic The Italian Shop. But a new twist, as often happens in crime capers, has developed in a developing story. And if you thought that when the Best Actor Academy Award winner Will Smith had slapped the MC Chris Rock with a Hollywood story of art imitating life, this heist story at a DC abortion facility connected with the George Washington University Hospital run by Dr. Cesare Santangelo. The Washington Surges Center on F Street is certainly turning heads in the nation's capital, even if even with recent reports of apparent spoliation of evidence. After apparently Curtis May Medical Waste Services described by Dun and Bradstreet, a reputable reporter of business and investor information. As a company that is located in Baltimore, Maryland, United States, and is part of the remediation and other waste management services industry, Curtis Bay Energy, Inc. has 259 employees across all of its locations and generates $87.19 million in sales USD. There are 338 companies in the Curtis Bay Energy Incorporated corporate family. According to its last issue of an operating permit by the Maryland Department of Environment on May 1st, 2019, which is effective until January 31st, 2024, Curtis Bay Energy Limited Partnership, Curtis Bay Energy, for short, owns and operates a medical waste incinerator facility located at 3200 Hawkins Point Road in Baltimore City. Medical Waste Associates Limited Partnership was the original owner of the facility. Phoenix Services Limited Partnership acquired ownership of the facility in 1995 when the incinerator units were installed. Phoenix Services changed its name to Curtis Bay Energy Limited Partnership in February 2005. And according to its operating permit, Curtis Bay Energy operates two identical incinerator units, EU-1 and EU-2, which are permitted to incinerate a maximum of 150 tons per day for the entire facility. The two incineration units share a common stack. Spoliation of evidence, electronic evidence, is a practice prohibited by the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure, Rule 37E, which provides that if electronically stored information, like that on websites, that should have been preserved in the anticipation or conduct of litigation is lost, because a party failed to take reasonable steps to preserve it, and it cannot be restored or replaced through additional discovery, the court, one, upon finding prejudice to another party from loss of information, may order measures no greater than necessary to cure the prejudice, or two, only upon finding that the party acted with the intent to deprive another party of the information's use in the litigation, may a, presume that the lost information was unfavorable to the party, b. instruct the jury that it may or must presume the information was unfavorable to the party, or c. dismiss the action or enter a default judgment. And under the rule it articulated in Reed v. MSPB, the time decision rule, if this action occurred within a reasonable time after a protected activity, then there is a burden shift of the presumption for the dependent or pending party to explain why their actions should not be considered as retaliatory, or in this case, in spoliation to prejudice a case. Under federal criminal law 18 U.S.C. 5, section 1519, whoever knowingly alters, destroys, mutilates, conceals, covers up, falsifies, or makes a false entry in any record, document, or tangible object with the intent 
to impede, obstruct, or influence the investigation or proper administration of any matter within the jurisdiction of any department or agency of the United States or any case filed under Chapter 11 or in relation to or contemplation of any such matter or case shall be fined under this title imprisoned not more than 20 years or both. So this is a pretty serious charge. So with a federal grand jury indictment handed down in February upon the initiative of the D.C. United States Attorney in a federal investigation commenced by federal law enforcement officials including the FBI and the issue of a warrant for arrest on March 23rd that led to the arrest of nine pro-life activists for an arrest that had originally occurred on October 22nd, 2020. The Southeast D.C. apartment raid by D.C. police, covered by two-time Emmy Award-winning journalists, with a news video production crew from WUSA 9 on March 30th of the apartment in which pro-life activist Lauren Handy, the director of activism for Progressive Anti-Abortion Uprising, or PAUU, in which it was reported that a total of five fetuses, ranging in size, had been recovered, certainly appear, at least coincidentally, to be connected and potentially implicating the Waste Management and Incineration Energy Company in potentially serious felonious conduct. The claims of spoliation had apparently occurred after a press conference in which Handy and several other pro-life activists had appeared on April 5th also correcting the number of fetuses that were actually in their possession to 115, although only five were recovered because the others had been buried, given a proper Christian burial, during which the Medical Waste Management Service provider, which does on all evidence operate to waste management incinerators, had been accused of providing energy services for the Baltimore area and the Curtis Bay Energy Partnership does in fact use those incinerators to produce energy for the greater Baltimore area. As pro-life content producers like LifeSite and Life News have reported, but which anti-abortion content producers have emphatically denied. LifeSite News had reported that the claims were made after two pro-life activists, Teresa Bukov Bukovinek, the founder of PAUU and Lauren Handy, said they received a box allegedly containing the bodies of as many as 115 aborted babies on March 25th from a truck driver who was loading boxes from a downtown Washington, D.C. abortion clinic to take them to Curtis Bay incineration facility. The boxes clearly have the Curtis Bay label on them, but Curtis Bay denies that this transaction had occurred. They claimed that they wanted three boxes and they received three boxes. But somehow a Curtis Bay box popped up that had baby parts in it. And these presenters had indicated had occurred during a return to George Washington University's abortion clinic on F Street, operated by Dr. Santangelo, and not directly connected to the arrest that had occurred on October 22, 2020, as had been indicated originally by the Light Site News in this developing story in their earlier reports. And at least coincidentally, just two days after the issue of the arrest warrant, following the indictment that had charged Handy and eight others with charges under the FACE Act, federal charges and for conspiracy to violate civil rights, a federal charge that has historically been associated with the defense of voting rights and nothing else, and which has rarely, if ever, been used since the 1960s, and even then handing down the lowest possible sentences, as in the case of the Freedom Riders in the Mississippi Burning Kings, as had been indicated in the last segment of the series. So apparently now, a abortion has been equated to voting rights. 
by the Justice Department. The claim, as articulated by pro-life activist Randall Terry at the press conference, was that the website used to state, we manage the largest medical waste incinerator in the U.S. and the only facility in the Northeast region that utilizes waste to energy incineration to safely convert infectious biomedical waste and non-hazardous pharmaceuticals into useful energy. Today, the website only states we manage the largest medical waste incinerator in the United States. Does Curtis Bay Energy Limited Partnership incinerate waste to create energy? Yes, they do, with two incinerator units licensed to incinerate 150 tons per day, according to their operating permit. Maybe they lied. And any case, in any case, any claims otherwise would certainly be false. St. Peter at the Pearly Gate was once asked by a wayward sinner the great existential question as to why bad things happen to good people. A question that affects the multi-billionaire Steve Jobs even as a child. And according to the account, old St. Peter paused for only a second with a quizzical look on his face and replied, I can't really answer that question because I really don't know because, to be very honest, in my job, I never encountered any good people. This briefing is unclassified, as you were. My name is Major Mike Webb, and by God, I am running for U.S. Congress. This year, we shall do the right thing, and we shall make America great again. Honest. Carry on. This advertisement was authorized by Mike Webb.